Hi there, I'm Dan Graham from Gothic Instruments and I'm here to talk about our new Dronar Brass module. And this is the latest in our series of different pad related instruments. Dronar is all about creating pads, atmospheric sounds, things that you can use. You can use it just for chords in any music. Uh, it's also, it tends to be quite useful for uh, media and media and film music so what this one does uh, is you know as you can see brass it's it began life as some concert brass players recorded in a church in Lancashire and then all this excellent brass audio was then painstakingly processed by Giovanni Tria he spent about two months getting all these different um, you know, nice sounds and weird sounds and prepared them all for this drone art engine. Uh, so rather than this being a, a standard orchestral brass library, uh, although it's, it's got nice brass. Getting distracted now. Sorry, I, I kind of go off. Um, where was I? Okay, so rather than it being an orchestral brass library, it's designed t to have a lot of pads and atmospheric sounds to make it, in, in a lot of ways, more useful than a standard brass library. Just because of the pure flexibility of what you can do with the drone art engine. Now, this does contain 200 different presets, which will give you a lot of inspiration, a lot of interesting sounds, but they it will teach you nothing about the way that drone now works just to go through one preset after another. So the great people like presets. I like presets. They're very good presets, but I would strongly say, get, quickly go onto the expert page and that's where you can really start playing about with with actually what's in there and, and use it and, and create the sound that you want. So that's what I'm going to do now, really, is just go through these, uh, what, what you can actually do with it. Now, the way Drone Now works, uh, a quick summary, if, if you've, if you're not familiar with it, is it breaks the sound down into four different layers. There's an effects layer which contains nothing but untuned sounds. Well, be quiet, eh? These are all real brass things. And all I can say is that this is what was sent to me from the recordings. I wasn't there, so I, I don't know what they were doing. It sounds snoring, like someone's snoring into a tuba maybe. But um, yeah, sorry. Effects layer, um, there's the high layer, which is high pitched sounds. Now, what Drana does is it only gives you a single note for the high layer and for the low layer. And what it does is you play a chord and it works out what is the root note of the chord that you're playing and then it generates a high note and a low note. Now, if you only play one note, it will just play back whatever note you're playing. But if you play a chord, it will just work out the root note. And this is to give you that clarity that you need because it's just what sounds nice really is that if you get a, a cluster at the bottom well, unless you're going for a special effect what what you want is really the root note to come through um, it's going to give you a nicer sound overall okay the Medium, the mid layer is really just the uh, the basic chords. The low layer, 
is the lower bass note. The intensity is the it's mapped to the mod wheel, and that just allows you to fade up and down between the different velocity layers that were recorded. The movement does depend on what's actually going on inside the interface. So uh, it controls the amount of movement in the sound and it's like a master control that controls the LFO as well as the arpeggiators. So if your arpeggiator does happen to be doing something interesting. Um, then movement. If you turn that down, that's going to sort of take away a lot of the sound of the arpeggio. Turn it up full and you can hear all those really separate notes. And somewhere in the middle. Okay, so uh, that's the basic controls on the front. Um, as I say, there's the arpeggiator. It's You've got an amount control that can give you less arpeggiator, more arpeggiator. You can create gating effects. Like this. Make it fast by changing the rate to 64. You can have stuff going on with the filter. Can't hear the filter effect much because the filter's already quite high, so if you turn that down. So you can hear it's already. Well, we've come a long way from the sound of just a brass. Clear, let's clear that, get rid of those. One good thing about the arpeggiator is if you if you play a series of notes, it'll give you a run. It's not the same. So I'm just going from one thing to another here, but um, if, if you want to have a quick listen to the actual sounds, the raw sounds, um, each sound is presented with three different ambiences, which is like a close mic ambience, um, a hall ambience, and a cathedral ambience. So for example, if we went to the, um, like here's a basic sustain sound, the CL means close mic, HL means hall mic, um, and cathedral means that it's been placed in a cathedral um, ambience. Now the sustain is a very clean kind of sound. This crescendo, these crescendo sounds, what what we did with that is that the players are actually um, the separate brass players all playing crescendos but offset at different times and the effect that you get is instead of it just being a swell just a wow it's um, it's more like a kind of um, a spacey effect where you can hear everybody all playing together but all... if you listen because the crescendos are offset and not all at the same time Well, it means that you can hear them. 
It's got like a bit of movement in it, you know, and a bit of life, reality. There's the, the fast, fast crescendos. If I could put a, a slow crescendo, slow cathedral crescendo up at the top. Blend the two together. If you turn the width setting up, what that does is it takes the two sounds and it puts one out to the left and one out to the right, so it gives you a bigger space, special pad. Uh, there's some vibrato, which uh, it says um, slow, medium, and fast, and that's just the speed that they're doing the vibrato, so a medium cathedral. You can hear immediately, so like a much warmer sound because of the vibrato, which is nice to then blend with the no vibrato sounds. I've just noticed I've got the cue, which is the resonance up a bit there. So it's creating a bit of a narrower sound. So if I lower that down, it's gonna be more natural. Blending a bit of lower. Thick, spread it out wider. Now adding that high octave in makes it seem a little bit like a church organ maybe. So it's kind of good, but... Then if instead of getting more straight pad type sounds, you want something a bit more weird. Well, there you go. There's the weird grunting droop tuba player. Fanatics Hall. See, they've got interesting names, but I've no idea how any of these began. Spam them all. Well, you can certainly see how you can quickly get into some weird territory. Scraping fish. It's hard to believe that that began as a brass instrument, isn't it? The snooze sounds out. Um, I have no 
idea what these brass players were doing. Right, okay, that gives you a good guide. You've seen lots of different interesting, amazing things. You can see that it's, yeah, it's some nice brass sounds and that's going to give you some nice pads. But underneath the surface, you really get into it. Well, it's just as weird and wonderful and interesting as, as any of the other drone hours. But everything's coming from this steampunk future brass Victorian synthesizer uh, dimension, which is a real dimension. It does exist in an alternative universe and um, we've brought it to you directly. Um, it's a world where giant tubers and French horns loom on the horizon in a multi-planetary brastopian future. And that's something to think about and uh, play pads to. Okay, thank you for listening. Enjoy. Well done for getting this far. Uh, you've done well. All right. Bye.